Hey, what's up all you art geeks? Today we're going to talk about dark art and why it is such a fascinating type of art to look at. My artwork is a little dark. I like to create a lot of haunting imagery. So once again, to start this conversation off on the right track, I went into the chat GPT, asked it, what is the allure of dark art? And it gave me a pretty nice little answer here. Here's the first part of the answer. It says, dark art, often characterized by themes of darkness, morbidity, and macabre, holds a unique allure for both creators and audiences. Several factors contribute to the fascination and appeal of dark art. All right, and then it gives me the bullet points, as it usually does. We have eight bullet points from ChatGPT. These look pretty good. I'm excited to get into these. Now, before we jump into this, though, I want to quickly mention that if you want to learn more about my painting process, if you want to paint like me, paint in oils, paint portraits, go over to my Patreon page. There's a bunch of tutorials. There are art downloads, all kinds of things that will help you with your art career, help you with improving your art skills. And if anything, it'll just help you see another way of approaching oil painting. Now, let's go ahead and get back to what we're talking about. Why is dark art such a interesting type of art to look at all right so the first bullet point from chat gpt is emotional depth and i think this is one of those reasons why i love this kind of art so much when i'm painting something like this i feel a connection while i'm painting it the viewers of my work have a connection some people will come into my studio see all the work and they'll think, oh, this is all very sad. But then the next person will come in and think, oh, it's kind of hopeful. It really depends on the person that's coming into my studio, what their day's like. It may come down to how they see the world. But what I try to do is add some color, add some glimpses of positivity, but also add some darkness to it as well. There's a lot of back and forth that I play with in my work. One piece may be a bit more dark and the next piece may have a bit more of a positive spin to it, all depending on how I organize the colors and how I organize the tones of the work. But at the end of the day, I find that what I'm trying to do is encapsulate some sort of human experience that we all have gone through at some point in our lives. Not everything is cheerful in our lives. We all have dark moments. We all have positive moments where great things are happening. And that's what I'm trying to do is create an emotional, complex work. I think that's what draws people into my kind of work. And it really depends on the person that's looking at it for them to decide what they see. Okay, so now the second one from ChatGPT is provocation and thought. Dark art has the power to provoke thought and contemplation. My theory on artwork has always been the more interactive you can be with the work, the more successful it is. Some artwork just blends into the background. It's meant as an interior designer's way of making the room look pretty. And there is other work that people buy where it is meant to provoke thought. And one of the greatest things that I find that it can do is that it can make you reflect on your own life, your own fears, your own anxieties, all those existential things that we go through during our lives. Like, what's the point to all of this? All of those things are what I'm trying to create in my work. And that's what I love looking at is other artwork that does that very thing. The next one on the list is aesthetic beauty. And even with darker themes, I think you can have a really nice aesthetic to a work especially if you're in a room where the interior design is really bright and cheerful, to have that one dark painting can really draw you in just by having the background be darker. It doesn't necessarily have to be a dark painting in general, but there is something that is aesthetically beautiful about a nice dark work in a well-lit, bright room that I find compelling myself personally. But then you can add some color, some composition, some interesting techniques like brush strokes and gestural movements to create an overall stunning visual piece that will draw the viewer in and have an undertone of darkness. Now, catharsis is the next one, and I find that this one is both for the artist and for the viewer. When I'm painting and maybe I'm having a rough day, it's even hard to start painting. And what I find is that through the painting process, I start to release some of those negative emotions. And this can happen for the viewer as well. People cry when they look at a very emotionally strong piece. It can bring out a thought from their past. I had somebody that come in and they found a piece that they really love and they purchased. 
And when they were talking about why they connected with that piece, it actually made them uh, cry in front of me because it brought up that really dark moment in their lives. This next one has got to be my favorite out of this whole list. And that is number five, rebellion and nonconformity. I tell you what, when I see people conforming, whether this is in social situations, online, where people are all just agreeing with the same way of thinking, it drives me crazy because there's alternate ways to look at something, but everybody decides that this is the way to think, this is the thing to do, so this must be the right way to go. For whatever reason, is something that I find myself always going the other way with. Whenever I see a bunch of people doing something, I always go the other direction. And that's a rebellious thing that I think I have just deep down. Whenever I'm creating my work, I always feel like I'm kind of sticking it to the normal type of artwork that's out there. The cheerful flowers and landscapes and things that are out there. I always find that my work needs to have some sort of darker element to it for it to be interesting. I have to imagine that everybody out there, no matter how much you follow the rules, follow the laws, everybody wants to be just a little bit rebellious here and there, right? There's no chance that there isn't somebody out there that doesn't have one little small percentage of their body that wants to do something rebellious just here and there. Whether it's maybe stealing the pin from the bank, they pocket it intentionally just because it feels a little rebellious. Or maybe it's just as simple as saying a swear word. Maybe it's just as simple as throwing an F-bomb out there. It could be that, just that one little rebellious thing that they normally don't do. Even though they never say a bad word in their life, they decide to go ahead and just throw an F-bomb out there every once in a while, and it will throw off everybody around them like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe you just said that word. I think we all need to let a little bit of that aggression out by being a little rebellious. All right, now the next one is symbolism and metaphor. Dark art frequently uses symbolism and metaphor to convey deeper meaning. I agree with this one. In my artwork, I am always using some sort of symbolism with the colors and the darkness and the light. I find that what I'm trying to create is a story about a person that is going through something. They're in a moment in their lives where they're trying to make the best of something, they're at a crossroads where they're trying to decide what direction to go. But that's the kind of symbolism that I'm trying to evoke with my work. A lot of it has to do with evolving and becoming the person you're meant to become. But that symbolism is intertwined into my darker themes. And I find that that can bring out feelings of hope. It can bring out some optimism from the darkness in my work. Every piece that I'm trying to create is some sort of transitionary point in a person's life where they're trying to be better and get away from that darkness. Or maybe they're just in the middle of that darkness and there is no hope from getting away from that. It all depends on the viewer. It all depends on how I look at my work. It can vary from day to day what a piece means to me and what it may mean to somebody else. This next one's kind of interesting too. Number seven, fascination with the unknown. Dark art taps into the human fascination with the unknown and the mysterious. It explores realms of existence that are often shrouded in uncertainty. That I connect with, uncertainty. There is an uncertainty in my work. When you look at the subjects in my work, they are uncertain about something. They're uncertain about the direction they want their life to go. They're unsure of what they want to do with their lives. There's a lot of internal turmoil happening in my work where there is that unknown factor, whether it's myself or a viewer looking at my work, there is that point when you look at them and you go, what are they thinking? What is going through their minds? They're clearly going through something, but what is it? What is that mysterious thing that they're thinking about? And again, another reason why I love my particular type of art. And finally, number eight, artistic challenge. Creating dark art can be a challenging and rewarding artistic endeavor. There is a bit of challenge in it. I would agree. When I'm creating a piece of work that is dark, I don't want it to be 100% dark. I want it to have a level where it's somewhere in the 50 to 70% darkness. I'm always trying to have some glimpse of hope, some sort of positive twist in each of my pieces where it doesn't feel like it's just this super downer of a piece of artwork. So that challenge for me of creating dark art with a hint of positive spin has always been something I really love doing. 
I would suggest for you, if you're out there and you're creating very positive work, even a set of flowers, if you're to paint some flowers, maybe throw in some dark shadows that aren't really there. Throw in a little touch, maybe 10% of darkness. You might find that your work becomes a little bit more interesting and more dramatic just by adding that little bit of darkness to it. All right, well, that was all eight. I have to say, this was one of the most enlightening eight bullet points from ChatGPT that I've done so far. It really helped to clarify why I create the work I do. I've always known that I've liked painting this way because of that emotional connection, but this really helped to get down into the details of why this kind of art appeals to me so much. The rebellious nature, the catharsis, the symbolic nature, all these things that it mentioned in these points were really great. So good job, ChatGPT. I think this is one of the best discussions about artwork in general, especially dark art. So far, I think this is one of the best discussions that ChatGPT has created for me. Let me know what you think. Do you like dark art? Do you like to make everything rosy and cheerful and positive every time you create something? I have to imagine everybody wants to put a little bit of rebellion into their artwork somewhere, whether it's a particular color, whether it's a particular subject matter, but go ahead, try to be rebellious, try to be a little bit dark, even if it's just five or 10%, you never know, it might add that extra little twist to your work that really elevates it to another level. So uh, once again, check out my Patreon page. If you do want to learn a little bit more about my process, you will see some nice dark art on there as well. There's some art downloads, all kinds of fun things for you to check out. Thank you again for watching another one of my videos, all you art geeks out there. I will talk to you again very soon. Bye.